Phase 1. Seen here at the head of the stretcher, the team leader passes the torso belt over the shoulders and under the arms, forcing the patient's back onto the fully flat stretcher. The arms are held until assisted by others. The powerful legs are controlled by the weight of one member while the others apply the Velcro cuff only. When the team leader has torso flat, the patient has weak lifting strength, and when the strap is wrapped around the bar once, he only requires one hand to hold him down. This allows him to leverage as much of his weight as required to control the patient's arms. The left arm is only secured until assisted by the leg team. The team leader at the head of the stretcher is able to hold the patient with one hand while he tucks his other hand under the patient's torso for leverage. This allows sufficient pressure to control the patient's upper arm. Remember, you're in his biting zone. The torso control procedure starts with the centering of the torso belt into the patient's neck and strap tossed over the shoulders. The loose ends are retrieved by pulling them from under the armpits and forcing the patient backwards. As soon as safety permits, turn the strap into a backpack and relieve the strain at the back of the neck. Notice that the side strap can be used as an extension of the attachment point. Phase 1 Achievement Very fast, firm, and yet is patient-friendly. Fast Get staff and patient separated quickly using split-second Velcro cuffs and keep staff safe from head attacks. Firm To keep patient flat on stretcher with only partial limb movement. Each gentle cuff holds 450 pounds. The tapered grip prevents any slide-out a common fault with most restraints. The torso belt keeps staff safe from directed punches and kicks. Friendly. A street fight is most dangerous to the patient, and isolating him into inanimate restraints is the safest procedure. The evenly distributed cuffs have no tight spots to cut off blood flow. Legs are not forced apart to prevent panic in sexually abused patients. Torso control strap prevents him from sitting up and tipping the stretcher while he is attached. Without lifting strength, there is little pressure in the shoulders. Chest is kept open and assists him in breathing and prevents positional asphyxia. Second phase of crisis restraining. The first stage of crisis restraining is to ensure that the patient is struggling against inanimate objects such as restraints and not against staff. Speed is paramount. Second phase, if required, focuses on making the patient totally secure but comfortable. With assistance, the cuffs are adjusted for optimal cuff contact. Objects are removed from beneath the cuff. Note that the patient can still strike outward to stop this, the security strap is passed over the cuff and through the opposite buckle. These straps are then passed over the patient's stomach and joined together. This prevents outward limb movement and stops the thrashing. For quick release, pull on one strap to release the pressure under the button before releasing with the key. The legs are similarly adjusted. Again, be careful of possible outward kicks. Remove material from beneath the cuff. The inner cuff is sufficiently soft for patient comfort. Patient material underneath the cuff may cause abrasions by cuff sliding. Pass the security strap over the cuff, through the opposite buckle, and then join with the corresponding security strap. Notice how the legs are kept together. With many psychiatric patients having had previous sexual trauma, locking their legs apart will create increased anxiety. The limb belts are sufficiently long and adjustable to allow a patient to be side positioned and prevent ingesting vomit, yet secured fully at the limbs. Any vomiting should be cleared to the side. Phase 2 Achievement 
This increased restraining may be required with very violent patients. There is no rush for this procedure, and all options should be considered. It is firm, makes fast adjustments, but also patient-friendly with staff flexibility to increase but, more importantly, decrease restraints. Firm. The main purpose is to prevent outward strikes and kicks. Prevent violent bucking of hips. Torso belt prevents him from sitting up and lunging side to side, possibly causing stretcher to tip. Each limb is now held with 1,500 pounds force. Fast. It takes only two staff, five seconds, to move to seven-point restraints. For emergencies, the locking system releases him very quickly by a touch of three buttons. Friendly. Although not apparent, he is actually comfortable. Irritating pressure points have been removed and there are no tight spots. Pressure is relieved at the neck and shoulders and is equivalent to wearing a backpack. Legs are kept firmly closed. Flexible. Additional buckles and holes allow more straps to be added quickly if required. All straps can be quickly adjusted to allow him to be side rolled for vomiting or loosened to reduce anxiety. Ambulatory Restraining Although Pinel produces a dedicated transport system resembling soft handcuffs and leg irons, we will show you the flexibility of the limb belt for transport purposes. The limb cuffs are attached as usual with the security strap preventing the patient from undoing the Velcro. The security straps are connected to each other, ensuring enough spacing between the hands so that one hand cannot undo the cuff on the other hand. The longer strap is then pulled tightly to the back and connected. Loose ends are tucked in to prevent entanglement. The patient is ready to travel. Should you be concerned about the patient pushing down on the restraints, the torso strap can be draped over the shoulders, under the arms, and attached to the back of the wrapped limb belts. This travel restraint is easier to apply for a patient on a stretcher where the limbs are already secured. You need only to disconnect one of the arm belts from the stretcher and bring it to the back of the patient and attach to the other strap. During this process, one arm should be still attached to the stretcher and since they're joined at the center, the patient is fully secured. The torso belt should always be manned for safety and control. From the stretcher, the last disconnect should be the legs, and only once the ankle strap is connected. It is particularly important to offer mobility for a restrained psychiatric patient, since latest evidence shows that they are more subject to cardiac and blood clotting events than average patients. Phase 3 – Ambulatory Restraining Achievement Changing the patient from the restrictive 7-point restraints to a walking restraint is fast, friendly, flexible, but firm. Fast allows two staff to incrementally move him from a seven-point prone restrained situation to ambulatory in only 10 seconds. Friendly allows him to help himself for personal comforts such as self-toileting. Permits full movement to prevent blood clotting and muscle atrophy. Walking reduces restraint anxiety and possible panic. Flexible but firm. Quick adjustments are made in full safety. Able to return him to previous and more restrictive position if he doesn't cooperate. He is able to walk in controlled steps but not running or kicking. He is unable to strike out but his arms can be adjusted for eating or smoking. The brown torso control strap over the neck prevents hands from being pushed downward to form a possible choking weapon. Restraints to prevent self-harm. This is the most problematic restraining intended to keep a patient in bed comfortably and able to move in all directions, thereby allowing a good rest and movement to prevent muscle atrophy and deep vein thrombosis. 
Pinnell strongly suggests using this device during a patient's normal rest periods. Please ensure the staff is aware of the Pinnell warnings available on the web and in the instruction booklet. The attachment straps are tightly placed on a solid, non-movable portion of the bed or stretcher. The waist belt is snugly attached and aligned so that the grommet holes fall across the patient's navel or valley of the waist. Since patients are all differently proportioned, there must be sufficient bed attachment. The straps must be very tightly secured and the waist centered in the bed. For centering patients, check that the inner restraint grommets are equidistant from the sides. The yellow side straps must be attached to ensure that the patient is centered in the bed. These will arrive already installed. This typical bed provides examples of possible attachment points that are in proximity to the center of the bed where the waist straps may be attached. Notice that these points move with the top of the bed as the bed is raised or lowered. This attachment does present problems if the bed is lowered, resulting in slack belts, always a potential hazard in restraints. If this point is used, the bed should be at its lowest position. This other attachment point will be used for our demonstration. The yellow side straps should always be tightened into the buckles of the waist belt that allow a patient to roll only a certain distance but it will only prevent direct rollovers to the side of the bed. With some effort, Pinnell's side straps are removable, but will arrive already secured into the buckles. The V buckling method is self-tightening that prevents accidental removal. Determine the desired distance of permitted roll and attach to the same pins that hold the waist to the bed. These lateral straps may also be used either to position a patient on his side or prevent a patient from rolling over on an injured side. A unique but very important Pinnell item, the pelvic strap, is intended to stop the upward movement of the waist belt over the thorax where possible asphyxiation could occur. You are strongly encouraged to apply this item to any patient with potential for an egress attempt from the waist belt. It does not stop removal of the waist belt when it is pushed downward, but can be used in conjunction with the shoulder belt to prevent this from happening. The loop is passed upward between the bed and the belt. Pass your hand under the interlocking straps and grasp the loop, pulling it through the straps. Now, pass the main body of the pelvic strap through the loop and tighten. The strap is then passed through the patient's legs and attached by two buttons to the waist belt. Here, the normal waist belt is attached to a patient using two locking pins and buttons. Notice that we're folding the belt over twice to give a firmer hold in the patient's waist. Recheck for a snug fit after a few minutes of movement inside the belt or when the bed is raised and readjusted. Pinnell never suggests having a loose belt, such as allowing passage of a hand between the belt and the patient. Loose belts never stay in that position, and it's during travel that they become hazardous. Notice that the patient is able to make full rolls, and that the lateral straps are preventing a further rollover. Here, the pelvic strap is attached to a patient's waist belt using the two buttons. We recommend leaving a one-inch space between the crotch and the strap to allow for rotation and preventing irritation in this sensitive area.
Potential problems with rotating waist belts. To alert you to the potential danger of the rotating waist belt, we illustrate some short and certainly not complete scenes of possible accidents. The main problems are associated with improper application of the waist belt to an unstable but very persistent patient who attempts bed or chair egress. It is always a good exercise to visualize yourself in the intended restrained position and try to anticipate all of the possible problems. In addition, you must ensure that your staff is fully aware of all of the Pinnell requirements and limitations. This bed checklist should help in the learning process and we encourage novice staff to use it during their introduction. In the following scenarios, all the recommendations suggested by authorities are followed. Belt loose enough for a hand to pass, lateral straps attached, and bed rails up and blocked. In this case, the patient attempts a frequent strategy of a downward escape, forcing up the waist belt over the thorax. Egress target is gap at the foot of the bed. When she cannot, she rotates within the belt and throws her legs over the railing into a fatal position. Helicoptering is an unreasonable rotation in bed in a circular motion by a confused patient. During the rotation and the rails up, the interlocking straps that hold the top of the waist belt with the bottom become entangled with the lateral straps and tighten with each rotation. If the belt is located above the thorax, this continued movement will asphyxiate the patient. The lateral straps could be tightened to prevent rotation or limb straps could be attached. However, both methods would make her immensely uncomfortable. She would need to stay face up without being able to roll from side to side, making the rotating waist belt useless. By far, the most dangerous egress is through the gap in a split rail because it is in the patient's line of sight. Lateral straps only guard against direct rollovers, and with any twisting direction, the lateral straps become ineffective. Do not restrain in this type of bed, but if you need to, use the Pinnell gap cover. Any other entrapment space such as end of bed gaps should also be blocked. Pinnell encourages the use of the simple pelvic strap to prevent the previous problems. It is based on the simplest of concepts, the baby high chair. It stops any movement downwards or prevents the waist belt from moving upward into the danger zone. It also stops possible helicoptering. Of course, it alone does not stop all possible accidents. For example, should you make a mistake by leaving off a gap cover, this clip shows that the pelvic strap is still a highly protective item. Please note that this setup is prohibited. It is necessary for you to assess the patient and his restraint environment and use your wildest imagination to determine how he or she could possibly get into difficulty. Then, use whatever Pinnell equipment you have to prevent that potential problem. But here is your dilemma. You are also trying to keep the patient as comfortable as possible and minimize restraint use. Although not always shown in this video to reduce visual clutter, here's why bed rails must always be in the up position or a gap cover installed in split rail beds. The gap in split rails is a tempting escape route and lateral straps will not prevent an accident. Here the Pinnell gap cover is quickly installed by looping two aggressive Velcro locks over the top railing. The double foam inserts, the inside one soft, the other hard, also prevent the collapse of the gap cover when legs are thrown on top. However, an alert patient may want to remove the Velcro, leaving the gap open. In this case, we wrap three straps securely around the rail and bed frame and lock them together using the Pinnell lock, preventing patient removal. The shoulder strap is still used to prevent the waist belt from being pushed downward and off the patient. 
Of course, with bed rails in the up position, an escape from the waist belt inside the bed means that a patient must negotiate this barrier. Begin by laying the green trimmed belt behind the patient with the X in the small of the back and the green pockets facing upward. Pass the long straps through the black loops. These are intended to eventually pass under the armpits. Now lay the other straps that were pointing towards the head of the bed over the patient's shoulders. Bring these straps down and connect them onto one or two of the pins that hold the waist belt together. Take the patient's right remaining strap and pass it through the pockets of the shoulder strap as close to the armpit as possible. Take the remaining strap and pass it over an inserted pin on the patient's left side. The other right strap now joins this strap on top of the pin. Ensure snug connections. Patients should feel snug and secure, not uncomfortable. She should be able to roll in all directions and sit up without strain. If necessary, to prevent the movement of the waist belt either up or down, use both the pelvic and shoulder belts. Both are connected to the waist belt with two pins that were inserted for the pelvic strap. Partial Limb Restraining The limb belt is also useful with an aggressive dementia patient to prevent strikes or scratching, tube pulling or self-damaging injuries. The cuff is placed on the patient and secured to prevent the cuff from being pulled off. Pass the long end through the waist buckle and attach it to the same pin that holds the waist belt onto the bed. The amount of arm movement can be delicately controlled to suit the situation. In this case, the patient is able to use her hands and fingers to make herself comfortable. Unlike gloves, she has the ability to manipulate her hands and fingers for self-feeding or grooming. Yet by controlling the distance of arm travel, she is unable to remove an IV or cause other self-injury. In addition, she is able to turn in bed in all directions for a proper rest. Chair use of waist belt. Always check for chair stability since tipping of chairs by aggressive patients has occurred. The bed waist belt is very adaptable for chair use while allowing many options of balanced comfort and security. It may be kept on the patient when moved from a bed or can be attached in advance, as shown here. The long attachment straps pass to the back of the chair and connect tightly in the back with a lock. If there is a possibility that the patient is able to work the waist belt up and over the back of the chair, Loop one of the attachment straps around a solid chair member to prevent upward movement. Secure the belt around the waist snugly. This is a very comfortable seating arrangement and permits a lot of movement within the chair, thereby providing long-term comfort. For additional security, the side straps are inserted. And pulled behind the chair and locked. Now you have less movement, but more patient stability within the chair. This is appropriate for patients lacking upper body control. If further upper body control is required, 
use other Pinel items such as the torso or shoulder belt. The ultimate in chair safety is to prevent downward sliding. The side strap is buckled to one of the attachment straps at the back of the chair and joined straps are passed under the chair between the patient's legs, tightly pulled and attached to the pin holding the waist flaps together. The yellow strap prevents the patient from sliding off the end of the chair. Ensure that a dexterous patient is not able to work a leg between the side strap and the waist. In this case, use a pelvic strap. Now, let's recap the benefits. The waist belt while in the chair gives comfort and safety and suitable flexibility. Comfort. She is able to move about freely in the chair and movement is restricted only as required. Even with this restrictive strap between her legs, she is still very comfortable. Safety is provided by ensuring no downward sliding beyond the edge of the chair, not unlike a baby's high chair, allowing firmness and upper body control in the chair as required. Flexibility. Adjustment, release, or additions can be made with the touch of a button. Other items can be added for more personal safety. Torso strap for upper body control. Limb belts to prevent striking or self-injury. Remember, use the pelvic strap if her dexterity allows her to move her leg between the waist belt and this yellow strap. The above options provide endless positions that match a patient's restraint requirements of balancing comfort with unquestionable security. Patient Protector The Patient Protector is only a safety belt that allows full movement in bed but secures a patient in bed. It attaches to the bed the same as a waist belt but since self-opening it is not a restraint. The waist flaps are held together by an aggressive Velcro. A cover is placed over the rough surface of any exposed Velcro for patient comfort. Now, let's recap the benefits. The waist belt provides unimpeded comfort, staff flexibility, and high levels of safety. Comfort. She is able to move around in bed in all directions and sit up. Flexibility. Additional restrictive devices can be added as required. Limb belt to prevent striking or self-damage such as tube pulling. Shoulder belt to prevent downward sliding of waist belt. Side straps to position her on one side. Safety. Because it appears to be an innocent item, staff can become complacent and an egress attempt may cause serious problems. For this reason, bed rails should be up and gaps blocked everywhere. Lateral straps attached to center her and prevent excessive roll. The simple pelvic strap, which prevents pulling waist belt over thorax, should be attached for most patients.